So let's take this next opportunity to take a look inside of a purchase order to see exactly what it looks like. So purchase orders, um, as we've already mentioned, they're associated to suppliers. And when you generate one, either from the create purchase order um, quick add or directly from the stock when you press the buy button, it will make that document in here after it has been generated. So let's go ahead and open one up to see what is inside of here. And um, we'll go through all of the details to have a closer look. So purchase order is a quite a simple document. In this PO, uh, we have the PO supplier specified here. And as mentioned earlier from the contacts page, um, you can add the supplier at the moment you create a purchase order the first time. We have the purchase order number. The purchase order number is auto-generated in Katana, but you can change the name of it. Sometimes you want to reference uh, a document that came from the, uh, the supplier if they had maybe quoted you a certain number. Uh, we have the expected arrival date. And the expected arrival date is normally set by default from the settings page. So if you recall from the settings videos where we, where we covered the default um, default arrival date, I think on purchase orders located here in settings, uh, sorry, default lead time for purchase orders of 14 days, then what's happening is this purchase order that's being made, on the day that it's made, it automatically puts the expected arrival date 14 days out in advance. And this day that is generated um, might not be obvious right this moment, but when we start getting into the manufacturing queue and the sales queue, this expected date for materials or products, depending on if you're buying products and reselling, are going to be quite evident whenever we're looking at the real-time planner that Katana has. We've also got the creation date here as well and a ship to location. So if you're using multiple locations in your Katana account, it is possible to um, ship a supplier uh, purchase order to different locations. So what it does is it creates the expected quantity that's arriving, not on the main location like it is right now, but if I switch that, then it would switch the expected quantities to my fulfillment location. So for the time being, we'll keep it set to the main location. And the idea here is, is that when this purchase order gets accepted or it's marked as received, then the quantities will increase at the location specified in the ship to area. So down here below, uh, this is a list of items not received, but after you start receiving them, then it creates a list of items that are received. And here you'll find the item that is specified, the very specific variant of a material or a product that is purchasable, a shortcut link to the item card, which we've already covered, the total quantities of the item you're buying, the unit of measure in which you're purchasing, the price per unit, the total price, and also tax applied. So this tax applied comes from the tax rates that are set up from your settings page. And uh, price per unit, uh, it automatically is filling this price per unit based on what's on the item card. So the price per unit of 2.1 US dollars, if we look up drawer knobs on the item card, you'll see that the default purchase price is 2.1 US dollars. Now that is where this price per unit originally comes from. It comes directly off of the item card when you're making a purchase order. Having said that, um, you can change it to whatever you'd like. Just as we had demonstrated with the moving average cost on a PO, you can adjust that price per unit to anything you'd like um, based on whatever the supplier is selling that item to you for. Down here at the bottom, we have a list of total units. We have subtotal before tax, then we have the tax calculated in, and then the total afterwards. Now, in later videos, when we start talking more about multi-currency, and let's say you're buying this item, which is currently for US dollars, but your supplier is only accepting payment in uh, euros, then the multi-currency functionality will be able to take the spot rate and convert it 
uh, back to US dollars, even if you make the purchase order in euros. So there's uh, uh, the multi-currency feature, which we'll cover um, in, the, uh, in the pro videos, uh, will highlight some of those types of functionalities and features. And also I'll move my face here to the middle, but we have the additional information section here, which is the same like you have seen for all of the other types of documents that we currently um, support. And um, here in the top right, uh, again, this is also auto saved. So keep an eye out when you're creating documents that you don't have any red lines anywhere. If you see a red line, it means something needs to be filled out or fixed prior to the uh, auto save actually working. We have the print template function. And uh, currently uh, we have two types of print templates for purchase orders, which are available on the uh, print template section in the settings page. And we will expand this functionality as well to include a uh, PDF uh, creator, um, which isn't currently available yet, but will be in the future. And um, then we have uh, delete and duplicate options for this PO in case you uh, need to do either of those two options. And that is currently what a purchase order looks like. And we'll go ahead and cover a workflow receiving process as well as discuss how the unit conversion works.